Venus, Neptune, Mars, and Luna. These are all names from Greek and Roman mythology. And while they're very attractive for the English language, they're still myth, mythology. Just like its synonym, story. And since stories have been told, they have always been acted out. Just as a story of landing on the moon. Or was it? One of the main theories against the moon landing involves slow motion film and wires. Theorists claim that in order to reenact the effect of the weak gravity on the moon, astronauts were carried by thin wires and filmed jumping around. Theorists also claim that artificial weight was added through slow motion video editing. Scientists refute this claim because of the dust kicked around by the astronauts when they jump. When the dust was kicked up, instead of gathering in a cloud, it fell immediately because of its lack of atmosphere. Theorists continue to claim that NASA built a vacuum in order to suck out all of the air. Some theorists have gone far enough to recreate their own moon landing using wires and slow motion. Another theory comes from the black void of space. There is no atmosphere, so there's nothing blocking it. Why are the stars not there? NASA argues, that the light striking from the sun hitting the surface of the moon is too bright for cameras to capture anything in the distance. NASA says the only way you'd see any stars is by standing on the dark side of the moon. One of the most famous theories comes from a stray moon rock that appears to have the letter C written on it. It gives off the impression that someone responsible for the props either left it on purpose or forgot to turn it over. NASA claims that it was a glitch in photography, or simply a hair that got its way into the development process. Other photos suggest that this was just an accident and the original photo did not have this C. Another theory is the different shadow length of the astronauts. Theories suggest that even though the astronauts are relatively close to each other, the shadows are a different length. This might suggest that the lighting was actually from a faulty lighting system on stage. Scientists suggest that they were standing on a hill or rough landscape, which is bound to produce weird shadow lengths no matter where they stand. They compared us to a snow-covered hill. The next theory comes from the movement or flapping of the American flag. Video footage of the flag makes it look like it's waving around as if there was a breeze or wind on the moon's non-existent atmosphere. Theorists claim that this is from a vent or a fan in the studio, expecting the flag to fall because there's no wind or atmosphere to push it. This can be argued against with the word inertia. Every object has inertia, and Newton's law states, an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force and an object at rest will remain at rest until acted by an unbalanced force. This is caused by the astronauts' struggle to place the flag in the ground. As they placed it, the flag was waving, and there's no atmosphere or high amounts of gravity to stop the flag from waving. The most controversial is how NASA dealt with the issue of the Van Allen belt, the naturally occurring belts of radiation that surround Earth, both on the way to the moon and back. Theorists argue that if they went through the belt, they would have received a lethal dose of radiation and died during or shortly after the trip. When most people think of radiation, they think of the nuclear bomb, Chernobyl, X-rays, Hiroshima, and generally not very great things. In order to bypass that radiation, you need lead shielding. The problem with the Van Allen belt is that it's not X-rays, but it's charged particles. There are two main types of radiation, electromagnetic waves, which covers everything from radio waves to microwaves, infrared waves, which is heat and visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays. That is the electromagnetic spectrum. 
The second type of radiation is charged particles. These are component parts to atoms like electrons, neutrons, and protons, which had been broken up by nuclear reactions or extreme heat. This is shot out of the sun as solar wind, and this collides with Earth's magnetic field, heading to the north and the south reacting with the air to create northern and southern lights. The rest is captured around Earth's magnetic fields, creating the Van Allen radiation belts. It consists of an inner and outer belt, and occasionally a third belt when the sun has large solar flares. It extends from 1,000 to 60,000 miles above the Earth's surface. This is also known as ionizing radiation. This means it has enough energy to knock out electrons from atoms or molecules that make up the spacecraft and the crew inside. This causes tissue damage if exposed for a long amount of time. The belt mainly consists of high energy protons and electrons. For the most part, protons are rejected by the aluminum shielding that covers the spacecraft. Electrons, or beta particles, penetrate 7 inches into living tissue, but because of its minuscule size, they don't tend to do much damage. They too can also be blocked by products like polyethylene, which contains a lot of hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms are very light and are able to mostly capture beta particles. They're used as a filter and barrier between the inner and outer hulls. The problem is when beta particles interact with large atoms. This gives off secondary x-rays. This is called the Bremsstrahlung effect. Ironically, the thick lead shielding that protects the crew actually makes the radiation worse by creating more x-rays. Whereas lighter metals like aluminum create less x-rays and even then some of the x-rays would be absorbed into the inner hull. What aided NASA was the size of the radiation belt and knowing where the most lethal parts were. High levels of radiation over a short time end up being better tolerated by the human body as it has time to repair the damage. Low but long exposure to radiation ended up being worse for the body as it was still being blasted with radiation as it was trying to repair itself at the same time. Long exposures of radiation in the Van Allen belt is lethal, but the crew spent about 6 hours in total, 3.5 hours going to the moon and 2.5 and hours coming back from the moon. This is after a 7 day rest, which gives the body enough time to repair itself before the next trip. Most importantly, it was the crew trying to avoid the thickest and lethal parts of the Van Allen belt. They ended up traveling through the thinnest part of the outer layer. While theorists still argue against this, believing that going through the Van Allen belt is a direct death sentence. And finally, I'll let JFK finish this. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal, will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. But we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket, more than 300 feet tall, the length of this football field, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of standing heat and stresses, several times more than have ever been experienced, fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, carrying all the equipment needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communications, food and survival on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth, re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that on the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today, and do all this, and do all this and do it right.
and do it first. Before this dictate is out, then we must be bold. On July 21, 1969, over 600 million people watched a man step foot on the moon. JFK never lived to see it. He was assassinated on November 22, 1963, six years before his dream came true. This is the final part of the conspiracy theory. The US and the USSR were in the middle of a space race, trying to outperform each other in technology. Many feel like this was a hoax, just so the Americans can get bragging rights over the Russians for technology. <laughs>